All right, Shalom Akim. Hey, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, for blessing me with another lesson to do. All right, I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone and Shalom to the elect. And this lesson was inspired by the uh, big bro, uh, Tazawo in the camp, you know, the leader of the camp. And uh, we were just chopping it up on uh, how over there in, um, well, over here in New Jersey, you had a, a controversial showing of a UFO. Now, some may believe it's a blimp, you know, some argue that it's a blimp, some argue that it's a drone, you know. Nevertheless, we through the spirit see that the Lord is showing us that he's on his way. Because not only in New Jersey, but all around the world, all right, as you see also, I believe it was back in, uh, in June, June 18th. That it was also a sighting in Tokyo, you know, and through the spirit, I believe the brother Kazak, he just brought out how there's a brother out there in either, um, I think he was either China or Tokyo, you know, and they, who knows he's an Israelite, you know, there's brothers all over the world and all over the world, there's sightings, there's been sightings, you know, but now they're more frequent, they're actually coming closer, you know, and, um, hey, one thing that's going to be unstoppable is our deliverance. You know, our deliverance is written of in the scriptures. Prophecy is on our side. Yahweh Shai is on our side. You know, and when you look into this world, you know, the people in your job, the food you eat, you know, the family that claims they love you, everybody's, everybody is against you. All right, except Yahweh Shai, except prophecy, man. Prophecy is for us to get out of slavery, for our oppressors, for us to put our oppressors in subjection and slavery. All right, for us to be at peace with the power of the whole universe, you know, and for us to be saved from the certain destruction. Of this world, okay, us to be saved, as it says in uh, was it Isaiah 11, you know, from all four corners of the earth where we were scattered, those that sigh and that cry for the abominations that be done in the midst thereof, okay, here it is. These prophecies, man, they give us a sigh of relief from everyday, uh, you know, from the everyday struggle of living in Babylon, you know, and it's like you always got a gainsayer. You know, here it is like a, a a fresh, a breath of fresh air. You know, when we see the prophecies, when we see chariots, you always got a demon out there that's trying to uh, naysay. You know, but the scriptures say, and I'm going to just grab it. The book of Isaiah, chapter 59, verse 1. It says, Behold, Yahweh's hand is not shortened. That it cannot save. Neither his ear heavy. That it cannot hear. Okay. So his elect is constantly praying to him. His elect is constantly. Sighing and crying for the abominations. That being done in the midst thereof. Okay. You know what the Lord. Put us in certain situations. So we can pray unto him. Alright. So it's not sure that it cannot save. Okay. Here it is, Esau wants to make us a perpetual slave, but the Lord said he shortened the, day, he shortened the days for the elect's sake. The Lord said he come while he is eating, when he is about to fill his belly. So the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Okay? As the old proverbial saying goes, the Lord's, hey, your arms are too short to box with God. Now, I want to look up that word shorten, all right, quatazar in the Hebrew. It says, to be short, be impatient, be vexed, be grieved, okay? Because here it is, Esau wants to put shrimp, I mean, put wickedness in the food, all right? You know, um, and do certain things to cause the Lord's people to uh, go uh, to go off. Not willingly, of course, you know, but even you got certain lawful foods that Esau put some pork or some in, 
you know, just to be able to accuse us and make the Lord grieve against us. But the Lord said, look, I'm going to get you out of this, man. I know the hell you're going through. I know that this devil was trying to trap you up, you know, but the scriptures say how. Uh, let me see. I think, let me see, Snare. see the brother brought this in, uh, brought this out in camp, Psalms 90, Psalms 91 and 3, which, hey, they both, these are both good, but I want to read Psalms 124 and 7, it says, our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. And that's that goes into the scriptures where it says that in Luke 12 and various scriptures that says that our power is going to come as a thief in the night. So he's going to break that uh, proverbial case that this devil has us in, man. You know, he's going to break us out of slavery. As a matter of fact, that made me think of uh, was that Jeremiah. Say 30 and 8 or 31 and 8. Oh no, it's 30. It might be 30 and uh 30 and 8. Okay. I shall start at 7. This is the last for that day is great, so that none is like it. That day, it is even a time of Jacob's trouble. Alright. What's that great, that strong snare that Esau is gonna put down on the people, locking down this place. All right, make you an enemy of the state if you choose not to partake of uh, taking of the RFID chip or vaccines. But he shall be saved out of it. Okay, you can say but. All right, so going to show you that there's going to be a very uh, there's going to um, this place is about to be a prison camp, but the Lord is going to save us out of this prison. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith Yahweh of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck. And will burst thy bands, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. Okay. So the Most High is already doing that, and he's going to continue to do that. See, right now, spiritually, okay, he's making us hate our lives. You know, he's making us... um. You know, research and go into uh, the truth of the matter and everything. You know, in the scriptures, most importantly, and on down to what physical things as far as herbs and, you know, history. And we kind of found out that it was all lies. You know, so now we are escaped from his uh, witchcraft that he puts upon the people. You know, and ultimately soon it's going to be uh, what physically. OK. You know, and that's going to be it's going to be a very, very beautiful day, man, when the Lord comes and gets us. I think about that. I was thinking about that today on the job. Like here it is. You know, everybody's working. Everybody's focused on a job, you know. And then out of nowhere, the Lord's going to come back. And destroy this place, man. The scripture say suddenly. The scripture speak about how suddenly how the Lord is going to turn this place upside down. You know, just a few days ago, you had, what, September 11th, where you had, you know, guys on a job, which I was, you know, a young kid at the time, but guys on the job were saying what they were doing on that day, how just out of, you know, how just amazed and not amazed, obviously not in a good sense, but how just shocked they were, how it happened out of nowhere, you know? So that's how the day of the Lord is coming, man, you know, and we cannot wait for that day. You see, for most, that's going to be a scary day. You know, it's going to come as, as a surprise, man. Surprises, surprises are scary, man. You know, yeah, su surprise, earthquake, uh, earthquake comes out of nowhere, a loud boom comes out of nowhere. That's surprising you. You know, but we look forward to the Lord destroying this place, man. You know, and um, his deliverance, as it says right here. 
And I'm just speaking through the spirit, man. All right. I'll start at uh, Romans 8 and um, 14. You know, because our spirit, through the spirit, we know that Yahweh Shah, our, our power is close. You know, there's like a spiritual connection going on. You know, like when you have a, um, a woman that, or a kid, you know, and something's not right with them, you can feel it through the spirit even before they tell you. All right. So we are as the bride of, you know, the bridegroom. You know, so like we are as the bride of of, of Yahweh Shai, man. We are we are connected. You know? We had a basically it was like a spiritual intercourse, man. You know? Meaning that the Lord gave us the Holy Spirit, you know, and that we can clearly see how he's gonna come back. We can clearly see what he's saying through the scriptures. Verse 15, for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Because there's some fearful times, you know, for for most because, hey, that heaven is being taken away from them. Two thirds, Esau, Edom. But these are happy times for us because we know our world is beginning. Their world is ending and our world is beginning. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Yahweh if so be that we suffer with him. All right, so count it all joy. You know, you look back at your life and like, fuck. You know, you realize how much you missed out on. But then, you, you know, then you got to count it all joy because we suffering with Yahweh The Lord is putting you in position to be happy at his coming. That... We may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory. All right. And this is a beautiful word right here. All right. It says, um, I want to jump down to the second definition. So it says, opinion estimate, whether good or bad concerning someone in the New Testament, which which is what we're reading, the book of Romans. Always a good opinion concerning one resulting in praise, honor, and glory. So, at the appearing of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, there's not going to be no naysayers. It's going to be what? Praise, honor, and glory. Splendor, brightness of the moon, sun, stars, magnific magnificence. Excellence, preeminence, dignity, grace, majesty. Okay? To see a so-called black man come down and crack them skies, man. Man, that's, that's going to be a jaw drop in at, at itself. A thing belonging to God, the kingly majesty which belongs to him as supreme ruler. You know, because it's one thing to gainsay when it's not that many... When there's not that many uh, 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 witnesses. But the whole world is going to witness the coming of Yahweh Shai. It says. And if a brother can remember what that precept is. Bible Kashab, please put it on a comment board. This is a thing belonging to Yahweh Shai. The kingly majesty of the Messiah. The absolutely perfect inward. Or personal excellency of Hamashiach. The majesty of and then it goes in the, uh, of the angels as apparent in their exterior brightness, a most glorious condition, most exalted state. Now, the word angel in itself just means what the um, messengers of God. And little do this world know we are messengers of God. OK. It says exalted state, most exalted state. Of that condition with God, the Father in heaven, to which Yahweh Shai was raised after he had received his work on earth. The glorious condition of blessedness and to which is appointed and promised 
that true Christians shall enter after their Savior return from heaven. Okay? So, man. Hey, man. This is Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 1. That's a beautiful definition, man. Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 1. Oh, it's locked. You dropped the phone. It says, Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed, okay, at the strangeness of his salvation. Another word for strangeness or the glory. All right. Why is it strange? Because it's going to be most excellent. It's going to be not something that was never before thought of, let alone even seen, not even thought of. So far beyond all that they look for. So far. All right. When you go back to that definition. That glory. All right. It says most exalted state. That's why the scriptures say, eyes have not seen nor ears have heard what the Most High have in store for them that love him, for those that waited for him. Okay? <laughs> hey, man, this is, <laughs> you know, this, this, uh, reading the scriptures and going over it, it's, it's, it's everlasting, it's everlasting happiness. Wisdom of Solomon 12 and 16. For thy power is the beginning of righteousness, and because thou art the Lord of all, it maketh thee to be gracious unto all. For when men will not believe that thou art of a full power, thou showest thy strength, and among them that know it, thou makest their boldness manifest. So with that, shall alarm to the elect.